Okay, so to get on this project, I'm first going to jump online and just have a look around for some 3D models that'll be a, a good fit for this diorama. Having a look on CD Trader, I found this model by Hiko 3D, which has got some amazing detail and is pretty perfect. And this beautifully sculptured Gypsy Danger model from Gambody.com is just awesome. Once I've got those models purchased and downloaded, I'll then jump into Blender. Tweaking the models in Blender is always really important to get the scale of proportions accurate to how they'll be printed out in real life. The original pose of Gypsy Danger is not that interesting, it's quite static. So just like posing an action figure in real life, I'll get to Gypsy Danger until more battle-ready stands ready to take on Godzilla. Next, I'll export those 3D models and get them loaded onto my 3D printer. Luckily, Godzilla's body pretty much fit exactly perfectly across the build plate, so I could print out his body in one part without having to, you know, chop up the arms and legs and glue them separately later. Once Godzilla is finished printing, I'll then remove him from the build plate and then chuck him into a bath of methylated spirits just to remove any excess resin that's still stuck to the body of Godzilla. Then after a bit more printing and washing, pretty much all the parts for the diorama are ready to be prepped and painted. With the plates protruded from Godzilla's back, I actually cut out that section and printed it out in a clear resin. This will then allow me to add some LED lights inside of the body of Godzilla to sort of simulate the atomic energy that's building up within his body. Unfortunately, due to the printing process, there's some pretty large gaps between both of the 3D printed parts. So to fill up those gaps, I use a bit of two-part polyester paste and just squeeze that down to all the larger gaps using a toothpick. This will then cure into a really hard plastic, which I can then sand to even out the transitions between both pieces. And then finally, to finish off the prep on Godzilla, I'll just glue on his tail. Before I start the paint job on the rest of the models, I'll grab this little bottle of bright blue acrylic ink and lightly airbrush that onto the clear spines of Godzilla. So I don't ruin any of this nice blue paint when I'm base coating the rest of the Godzilla. I'll actually use some liquid latex mask to temporarily cover and protect the spines. With these parts all prepped, we can now move on to the painting stage. Okay, so to get started on pacing these pieces, I'll first give them a nice base coat in a solid black. Then for the body panels of Gypsy Danger, I'll get this really interesting gunmetal blue. This paint, it, it sort of must have minuscule chips of some sort of metal blended into it, because when it's applied to all the pieces, it really gives this amazing metallic sheen to all the parts of Gypsy Danger. Next, I'll grab some paint and some brushes and begin to paint in some of the more finer details across the parts. To recreate the numbering on the shoulder plates, I printed out a page of the number 34 at a whole bunch of different sizes. I then stuck down some clear packing tape on top and using a sharp blade, I can then carefully cut out a miniature stencil that would be the exact right fit for the model. After I masked off the model, I jumped back then into my spray booth and just applied some white paint across the stencil. And with that, the base coating for Gypsy Danger is pretty much done, and we can now move on to adding some weathering and some battle damage to the armor. To achieve this effect, I'll use a small bit of sponge that I've torn up to create an interesting texture. After dipping the sponge into some silver metallic paint, I'll then carefully dab it onto the model. This technique really allows me to add some natural looking scratches and damage, particularly around like the edges of the armor plates, sort of simulating the scars from some previous epic battles that Gypsy Danger has been in. I feel like adding little details like this really adds to the story, and helps to breathe life into the diorama. Now that the weathering is all done, I'll use some super glue to assemble all the pieces together. Okay, moving on to the next stage with Godzilla, I'm going to start off with a bit of dry brushing. I'll use some light grey paint and gently brush it across all the raised scales on the model. This technique is really great for bringing out those intricate details and making them really stand out. Next, I'll apply some oil washes which are really going to add some depth to the model. I'll begin with a dark green wash, applying it all across the whole body of Godzilla. 
This color will seep into the tiny nooks and crannies and lay down a really nice deep tone in the shadows. Finally, I'll top it off with a black oil wash to tone down some of that saturation. Next, I'll paint the details on Godzilla's mouth. I'll add a deep red on the tongue and add some darker shades in the gums and teeth. Now it's time to tackle the liquid latex that we previously applied to Godzilla scales. I'll be using a toothpick to carefully pick off this sticky layer. It's a bit of a tedious process to be honest, but it was super important to ensure that we kept that vibrant blue underneath while we, you know, painted the rest of Godzilla. And the last step is just to add some blue atomic energy around his chest and neck. Now the characters are all painted, we can move on to creating the base. I'll begin by first super gluing down both models onto this bit of wood that I've colored with some packing tape. The layer of packing tape on top of the wood will mean that the resin actually won't stick to the wood and I can pry it off cleanly. We'll then mix up some part A and part B of the resin. Probably use about two liters in total for this. So it's a pretty big pour to be honest, but you know, we want that ocean look, so it's all worth it in the end, I think. I'll then add in some blue resin dye and mix it all up for about 10 minutes. And then it's onto the resin pour, which is, you know, where you really cross your fingers that you've sealed all the edges properly or you're gonna get a real nasty mess in your workshop. Luckily, I did seal the edges pretty well, but I had one major issue, which you'll see in a second. So for some silly reason, the day that I decided to cure this resin, it was about a maximum of 34 degrees, which is about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was seriously hot. Um, and that actually caused the resin to boil um, while it was curing. Resin is already an exothermic reaction and added with the you know insanely hot temperature of the day it caused the resin to start cracking and melting and it was just a really bad situation so so i chucked the whole diorama in my room with some air conditioning and put it on a bed of ice and that eventually slowed down the exothermic reaction and and luckily i saved the diorama at the end because i added that layer of packing tape on top of the wood i can use a spatula to carefully pry free the block of resin from the wood so once we've removed the diorama from the mold, the next step is to really bring the ocean to life. I'll be using a Dremel to carve out some ocean waves on top of the resin. My goal is to create the sort of look of an ocean in turmoil, churned up by the you know, immense force of two massive beasts locked in a fierce battle. Once the carving is all done, I'll then go back over with this brush to sand out all the bumps and valleys. Next, to ensure both models are protected when I apply a clear coat on top of the resin, I'll carefully mask off both Gypsy Danger and Godzilla with some Glad Wrap and some masking tape. After masking off the models, I'll take the diorama down to a well ventilated area. There, I'll apply a thick clear coat to the resin. This step is really key to make those ocean waves we just carved really pop and glisten. Now we'll start adding some details to the waves and water. First, I'm gonna use this snow texture paste. It's really perfect for creating you know, a bit of a realistic effect of churned up whitewash and foam, especially around the legs of Godzilla and Gypsy Danger. To give a sense of scale to the diorama, I'm gonna add this little warship boat into the waves. I'll first start by painting the details on the boat, and then once it's done, I'll secure it to the diorama using some super glue. To finish off, I'll use some more of the snow texture paste to create the effect of sort of whitewash trailing out the back of the boat. I'll then continue to add a little bit more of that foam texture paste just onto the peaks of the waves. To enhance the realism of the whitewash foam effect, I'm gonna try and make it look like some of the foam is submerged underwater. To achieve this, I'll add a bit of blue dye to some UV resin. I'll then carefully apply this tinted resin to the lower parts of the foam paste. This will then hopefully make it look like some of the bubbles are rising from under the water. With the base now complete, it's time to focus on Godzilla's iconic atomic breath. To create the effect of the massive blue laser shooting from Godzilla's mouth, I'll start with a hot glue gun stick. First, I'll drill a hole straight through the center of it. Unfortunately, my first attempt didn't go quite as planned and I twisted the glue stick too far and broke it in half. But that's no big deal, I'll just quickly drill out a second one. To get that bright glowing effect, I'm gonna use a miniature LED strip. After wiring the LED strip, I'll insert it into a slot that I've cut in the hot glue gun stick. To add some extra detail and depth to the atomic breath, I'll use some hot glue and build up layers of texture on the laser beam. This will give it that intense fiery look that Godzilla's breath has in the movies. I'll then thread Godzilla's atomic breath through his mouth 
and attach it inside his body to a battery pack. And with that, the diorama is finished. Let me know which two characters from different shows or movies or games that I should battle against each other in my next video. Thanks again for watching and check out the reveal.